So the Supreme Court just forced an appeals court to rehear a ban on so-called assault weapons using the correct type of analysis, which is text as informed by history. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think it's time for these bans on so-called assault weapons to go away, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI is an accredited online college that helps students learn the skills and techniques they'll need to be successful in the firearms industry. So if you enjoy gun repair, ballistics, and learning about firearms, SDI might be a good option for you. To find out more about SDI, you can visit the website linked down below. And thank you again, SDI, for sponsoring this video. So like I said in the intro, the Fourth Circuit was just forced by the Supreme Court to rehear the state of Maryland's ban on so-called assault weapons. The case we'll be talking about in this video is Bianchi v. Frosch or Bianchi v. Frosch. I think it's Bianchi v. Frosch. This case is seeking to strike down Maryland's unconstitutional ban on so-called assault weapons. Now for some quick background on this case, for those of you who aren't aware of what this case involves. The state of Maryland identifies certain rifles as so-called assault weapons. Maryland bans the sale, transfer, or possession of semi-automatic centerfire rifles with detachable magazines and two offending features, like a folding stock, a grenade launcher, a flash suppressor, or other items as well, specific characteristics can make them a so-called assault weapon. It also bans a semi-automatic centerfire rifle with a fixed magazine that can accept more than 10 rounds. The state of Maryland also bans a semi-automatic centerfire rifle that has an overall length of less than 29 inches. And on top of that, they have a uh, characteristics or actually a specifically named make and model ban where 45 named types of rifles are identified as so-called assault weapons. This structure is similar to what states like the state of California also have in their bans on so-called assault weapons. And it's also similar to the way the Democrats are currently trying to institute a federal ban with H.R. 1808, which just passed the House. However, even with H.R. 1808, H.R. 1808 is a little bit more comprehensive because they learn from some of the gaps that these states like California have and Maryland has as well. For example, Maryland does have some workarounds like the heavy barreled rifle rule, but in reality, they still have a state ban on so-called assault weapons. And that is exactly what's being challenged here in this case. The ban was originally challenged in a Maryland district court in the complaint, the plaintiffs conceded that their Second Amendment claims were foreclosed at the district court level based on a prior Fourth Circuit decision on this issue. A prior case, Colby, challenged Maryland's assault weapons ban. In the Colby case, a district court upheld the Maryland ban using intermediate scrutiny. On review, a divided panel in the Fourth Circuit concluded that these rifles are protected by the Second Amendment and that a ban substantially burdens the right of to self-defense within the home. On that basis, they struck down this ban using strict scrutiny. Well, the state of Maryland didn't like that they had lost, so they sought an en banc rehearing in the Fourth Circuit. On review, the en banc panel upheld the state's ban, finding that these rifles are outside the protection of the Second Amendment because they are useful in military service. So that case, Colby, currently stands as precedent within the Fourth Circuit. This case, Bianchi, conceded Colby is the controlling precedent, but that it's incorrect and should be reversed by the courts. The district court in this case, Bianchi, ultimately dismissed the complaint for a failure to state a claim. That dismissal was then appealed up to the Fourth Circuit and the Fourth Circuit once again upheld the dismissal. Then this case went up to the Supreme Court seeking review on this issue before the Supreme Court, finding that the or they were seeking for the Supreme Court to find that this prior case, Colby, just was simply incorrect, used the wrong standard, used the wrong type of analysis, and therefore should be reversed. The question presented to the Supreme Court in the Bianchi case in the petition was whether the Constitution allows a government to prohibit law-abiding, responsible citizens, from protecting themselves, their families, and their homes with a type of arms that are in common use for lawful purposes. In that cert petition, generally the plaintiffs argue that the Supreme Court needs to take up this case first to resolve the conflict in the lower courts over the constitutionality of laws banning commonly possessed firearms or commonly possessed arms like the AR-15s. Second, because the decision below is flatly inconsistent with Heller, here they're saying that the Colby case, this useful in military service, this whole analysis that was used by the Fourth Circuit is not consistent with Heller, McDonald, or Miller, or the other uh, Supreme Court decisions that have come before it. And third, because the question presented is exceptionally important because it deals with constitutional rights. In contrast to that, the state of Maryland put forward three main arguments on why the Supreme Court did not need to review this case and should deny review. First, because there's no conflict that exists over the constitutionality of uh, so-called assault weapons bans. Second, because the Court of Appeals decision is correct and consistent with Heller. And third, they argue that this case was not a good vehicle for the Supreme Court to review this type of issue. The Supreme Court ultimately did rule in a landmark case, a Second Amendment case called New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin, and found among other things that the correct way to review Second Amendment cases is to look at the text of the Second Amendment 
in light of relevant history. The relevant history is that during the 1791 a ratification of the Second Amendment and potentially during the ratification of the 14th Amendment. The burden is therefore on the government to find a historical analog dating back to 1791 to justify these types of restrictions. If they cannot find some sort of historical analog for their restriction, then it's unconstitutional and must be struck down. After issuing that ruling in the landmark case, New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin, the Supreme Court then issued a GVR in a number of cases, including Bianchi v. Frosch. That means that they granted review, vacated the judgment down below, and remanded the case back down for reconsideration within the Fourth Circuit. That reconsideration requires that this case be reheard using the text as informed by history standard of review. And today we received an order by the Fourth Circuit reopening this case, Bianchi v. Frosch, and setting the schedule for this case to be reheard. Currently, briefs will be filed and finished by September 22nd of this year, and tentatively, they have set oral arguments in this case to take place during the week between December 6th and December 9th. So as of right now, the case is set to be resolved before the end of this year. That means that the Maryland ban on so-called assault weapons may end before the end of this year, and Maryland may be free of this ban really soon. Also, this throws a wrench in any federal ban on so-called assault weapons or any type of rifle. Since the looming Fourth Circuit decision is set to decide this issue using text as informed by history before the end of this year. Now, just because this case is being reheard in the Fourth Circuit using the Bruin decision doesn't mean that the court will not try to find some sort of way to uphold this ban in Maryland. However, without the balancing of interest test and the rejection of the useful and military service standard review, it's going to be really hard for the state of Maryland to justify this type of ban. So really before the end of this year, you could have two circuit courts, the fourth circuit and the ninth circuit, striking down these state level bans on so-called assault weapons using the Supreme Court's new or reaffirmed standard review, which is text as informed by history. That's also a little distinction I wanna point out is that this is not a new standard review. This is something that should have been used since Heller, since McDonald, but lower courts like the Ninth Circuit and Fourth Circuit have refused to use it. They should have been using text as informed by history this whole time, that was the analysis. But finally, you have the Supreme Court saying yes, that they should be using that and that the two-step approach, the balancing of interests, this useful military service requirement or standard review that the Fourth Circuit was using, they finally said that all those lower courts were wrong for doing that and now they must review all these cases using the correct type of analysis and that is a big deal. So if we get any more information on this or any more updates, I will let you all know because again, this is going to be really important because this is going to be one of the first times you're gonna see a circuit court, including the fourth circuit or the ninth circuit, using this type of review to look at these uh, bans on so-called assault weapons. And although it's not going to be binding precedent on everybody, it is still going to be persuasive. So. In the Ninth Circuit, you can point to other jurisdictions like the Fourth Circuit and say, hey, the Fourth Circuit dealt with this type of issue as well, and they found that these types of bans are unconstitutional. Therefore, Ninth Circuit, you should also find them unconstitutional. Again, it's not binding precedent, but it can be persuasive and can really also help to stop any federal level bans that are currently moving like HR 1808, although I don't think that's gonna pass through the Senate, but still, it's better to be safe than sorry, and it would be good to have circuit courts finally using Bruin to find at a state level that these bans are unconstitutional to also point to therefore a national ban would also be unconstitutional. If you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. Again, I wanna thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys directly impact these videos, impacting this channel, helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So again, thank you so much for all of your support. And as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.